Christian greetings and welcome back to Baraton TV Bible Quarterly Lesson Study. We are glad that you could join us. We would definitely like to uh, encourage you to get a copy to make your study easier at your nearest Adventist uh, book center or visit absg.adventist.org absg.adventist.org and get yourself your favorite edition. Last week we talked about Jesus Christ died for us on the cross but this week we are talking about something amazing about his victory over death. Joining me is Hobson Mokaya to my right and Alvin Abuga to my left. But before we begin our study today, uh, may Alvin open the study with a word of prayer. Okay, we are praying. Our God and our Father in heaven, thank you so much for guiding us. Thank you so much for protecting us and allowing us once again to come here and study from your word. We pray that even as we dig deep into your word, that you may simplify these words that they may give us wisdom, that it may even prepare us and give us hope for our salvation. Be with us to the end. It is my prayer in Christ's holy name. Amen. 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 Our, our verse for today is from Revelation chapter 1, verse 17 and 18, which says, When I saw him, I fell down at his feet like a dead man. He put his... He put his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the one who lives. I was dead. But look, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys to death and to the place of the dead. As important as is the cross and the death of Jesus Christ to Christianity, his resurrection is also very vital and important as well. It is important the point that Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 16 to 18, that if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then also, those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. We will definitely look at this Christian hope more next week. But Paul was trying to emphasize that the resurrection of Jesus is really important. In as much as he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2, that I determined to know anything, to not know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. It really does us no good apart from from his resurrection that is how crucial the resurrection is however it's hard to understand the resurrection of jesus and the resurrection of the saints at large if there are already saints who are enjoying the heavenly bliss i mean uh, those who have died and we are hearing reports that they are already enjoying the heavenly bliss uh, it, 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 it will be hard to understand that anyway this week we'll be looking at Christ's resurrection and all the convincing evidence he gave us to believe that he indeed resurrected. You know, Christ's mission seemed to have failed. It seemed to have ended with his death on the cross. Satan had successfully instigated Judas to betray his savior and the chief priests and elders to demand of the death of Jesus Christ. All the disciples of Jesus Christ flew and they forsook him. They flew and they forsook Jesus Christ. Peter even denied his Lord three times. We would have thought that the mission of Jesus Christ has ended on the cross. When Jesus Christ was alive, he had predicted that he would be in the grave for three days, just as Jonah was in, in, in the belly of the big fish for three days and three nights, and he predicted that on the third day he will resurrect. Well, his enemies heard of his prediction that this guy said he will resurrect and they made a plan to make sure that he does not resurrect. We find the plan in Matthew chapter 27, verse 62 to 66. I'll read it says, The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priests and Pharisees went to Pilate and they said, Sir, we remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said, after three days I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure 
until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he has been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Take a guard. Pilate answered, Go make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard. So the chief priests and Pharisees made sure that Pilate had that, you know, this deceiver when he was alive, he said he'll resurrect, let's secure. And Pilate says, secure that tomb as much as you can, as safely as you can. So Jesus lies in a tomb, healed out of a rock, closed with a large and sealed stone protected by Roman guards and the spirit of prophecy goes deeper not just Roman guards but even demonic powers if Satan could he would have held Christ locked in the tomb you remember earlier we talked about the resurrection of Moses in one of the lessons and we said how Jesus Christ came he contended with 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 the lucifer with the with the with the devil yani the devil in contending with michael the archangel michael did not seem so much when in controversy he just said the lord rebuke because the devil was guarding the tomb of moses the place of his burial because moses as a dead person was the captive of satan so satan is doing the same thing to jesus he's guarding the tomb of jesus not only with Roman soldiers, but with demonic forces, and Satan himself is there. All these security measures which were taken to keep Jesus locked in the tomb only made his victory over death and the host of evil even more noticeable because of all the precautions and measures that his enemies took to try to make sure it would never happen. So, the Pharisees were so scared of Jesus, they made sure, let us secure this tomb. Let us secure it so much that he will not come out, the disciples will not steal it. And probably they were afraid that in as much as he's dead, who knows, he might be alive, he might be walking somewhere. That guy is powerful. But Mr. Hobson, how successful were the strategies of these Pharisees to lock the body of Jesus Christ in the tomb? Thank you. Now, um... <coughs> It's true that really Christ resurrected. Yet you see, even as our brothers described how the soldiers, the Roman soldiers, they tried their best to secure the body of Christ in the tomb. And you see, even Satan himself was interested because Satan wanted the body of Christ to remain forever in the tomb. Yeah. And so, you know, he, he dispatched his angels, his evil angels, his hosts, to go and guard the tomb so that Christ will never never comes out of that tomb. But you see, we read in um, in, in 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 Matthew chapter twenty eight uh, verses one through six of the resurrection of Christ, of how you know Christ resurrects from that tomb uh, the day the, the day after the Sabbath. Now, you see, there are verses that really uh, give us. Give us, give us a picture of what happened behind the scenes. Now, you see, uh, Christ himself in John chapter 10, verse 17 and verse 18, he speaks of these words which uh, enlighten us on really what happened at this juncture. Now, this is what the Bible says, John chapter 10, verse 17 and verse 18. Now, the Bible says, The Father loves me because I give my life. I give my life so that I can get it back again. Now that is now this is verse 18. No one takes my life away from me. I give my own life freely. I have the right to give my life and I have the right to get it back. In another version it says I myself can give my can lay down my life and take it back again. You see Christ was God and he was human at the same time. He was a hundred percent man, he was a hundred percent God. But do you know that the divinity didn't descend down to the grave? The, 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 the divinity, uh, it's impossible for God to die. So as much as the human, the, the human, the humanity of Christ died, the divinity did descend down there. So when Christ says, I have the power to lay down my life and take it back again. 
oh, he's God, he can do it. Nothing is impossible with God. That is what he always, he always told his disciples. That is what he said back then in, in Matthew 19, uh, that nothing is impossible with God. Now, even though Satan and the Roman soldiers and the high priest could do all they could do, mm-hmm. you know, uh, uh, my brother said that, they were told, go do your best. Mm. Go do what you do. Go, go, do and wa- go, go, do, go and do what you know best to guard that tomb. But uh, the truth is, they did their best. But their best is, uh, you know, nothing before God. Mm. Because before God, he is able to do everything according to his will. Mm. And you see, they, they not only, Christ did not only resurrect, but... These people, the, the Roman soldiers who were guarding the tomb, they saw the very the very scene. They mm-hmm. saw a mighty angel descend from heaven and roll away the stone and sit on the stone. Actually, they they even fainted. They could not behold that scene because of the glory that um, the, the glory that this angel descended with. They fainted, and when they were giving the report to the high priest, the high priest were um, afraid. And the high priest, because they really never wanted this news to break out, that Christ has been resurrected. So they said, what we'll do, let's give you some money. Now say, go and say that the disciples came while you were asleep at night and they took the body of Christ. That is what, that is what we want you to go and say. And so they took that sum of money. They went and uh, you know, gave the news that, oh Christ, it's like when we were asleep, his disciples came and stole his body. Mm. So that is why he's not in the grave. Of mm. course, there is an empty tomb. Mm. But the way that uh, that tomb is empty, it is because they came by night and stole the body of Christ. But we know that Christ, he resurrected. He was God. He was a man. There is nothing impossible with God. Again, it's an act of God as it is written elsewhere in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 24. Mm-hmm. But I, I would love us also to realize that when Christ died, now this is recorded in the book of Matthew chapter 27 from verse 51, mm-hmm. that when Christ died, there was something else. Of course, there were this, uh, there were this chain of events that took place. Uh, this is from verse 51, which says, when Jesus died, the curtain in the temple was torn in two pieces, of course, from top to bottom. Um, of course, and then he says, also the earth shook and rocks were broken. Verse 52, the graves opened and many of God's people who had died were raised from death. They came out of the graves and after Jesus was raised from death, they went into the holy city and many people saw them. Mm -hmm. Now, as first fruits, as as, as trophies, these people, after Christ, after Christ's resurrection, they ascended with him to heaven, to that he may present them before the heavenly council, before the heavenly intelligences, before the heavenly uh, beings, that these are my fruits. This is what um, my labors have borne. You know, these are the fruits of my labors. Behold. Now you see, in Christ's ministry, there were a few resurrections that Christ did. Remember Christ bringing back to life the daughter to Jairus, you know, the the son of the widow of Nain, Lazarus. But then, even though Christ resurrected these people, they were still subject to death. Mm -hmm. You know, they they, they died again. Mm -hmm. Remember even Lazarus, uh, the Pharisees and the the Pharisees actually, they they plotted again how they could kill him. Mm -hmm. So it means these people, they were subject to death. Mm -hmm. But these people who have been raised here in uh, Matthew 27, you see, they've been raised to go to heaven. So they were raised with immortal bodies, glorified. Now, I, I, I think this again, um, you know, kind of, gives, kind of gives us a picture what will happen in the last day. That... Um, we need to hold dear. We need to really cherish the, the 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 promise that one day there is a resurrection awaiting for you and for me. That uh, Christ is able to resurrect us. And the power of the grave will not hold us forever. To those who believe in Him now, 
and have everlasting life now because in him is life and uh, he came to give life that we might have life and have it more abundantly you know if we believe in him this day and he finds a dwelling place in our hearts then at the last day our portion will be the portion of these people who are resurrected you know with immortal bodies and they ascended with him imagine ascending with Christ and uh, you've been given uh, this immortal body a body which will never die a body which is not subject to disease or weary you know or mm. any any faint i mean this is an immortal body a glorified body and um live alone receiving an immortal body now imagine being before the presence of Christ of Christ and God mm -hmm. and the holy angels and now you can see them you see now uh, our sight is veiled in a sense angels are with us but then we can't behold them but imagine this day and age where now um, our sight the, 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 the veil will be swept away and we shall behold the angels and i, I, I can even imagine we'll be meeting the guardian angels who have been um who have been protecting us mm -hmm. who have been who have been always you know who have been ministering to us mm -hmm. and what a glorious day it will be okay. when uh, Jesus we shall see mm -hmm. may you uh, may, may i see you there in that glorious day mm -hmm. when we shall ascend to the heavenly table and to meet and sit with Christ amen Wonderful. It's amazing how the chief priest said that deceiver when he was alive, mm. he his disciples might go and steal his body. Please secure it. Mm -hmm. After it was thoroughly secured, Christ resurrects. Mm. The same chief priest and Pharisees say, ah, they now go and pay the soldiers to say the disciples stole the body. While they had done everything to make sure that the disciples did not steal the body. It's also amazing how Jesus Christ is not selfish with the life that he has, you know. The power he has to lay down life and to take it up again. He came out of the grave with some trophies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And thus immortalized the sacred truth of the resurrection forever. Mm -hmm. These people who resurrected with Jesus Christ went into the city and appeared to many and said, Hey, Jesus Christ is alive. We are alive courtesy of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But uh, Mr. Alvin, were there people who actually really saw the risen Christ? Yeah, you see the events between the death mm -hmm. and the resurrection of Jesus are events that are so fascinating mm -hmm. especially when it comes to his resurrection uh, we have just seen that just before his death the chief priests and the Romans are like secure that tomb mm -hmm. like keep it safe seal it they are there day and night mm -hmm. And they want it in the name of keeping that place safe. Mm -hmm. But you see, dear viewer, Christ is one who cannot be limited by humanity. Amen. He cannot be limited by humanity. He who said he can lay down his life and take it up again surely did it. Amen. And what the soldiers thought would work for them actually worked against them. Because it was truly a confirmation that Christ's body was not stolen but he surely resurrected he surely resurrected now after his resurrection there is something that happens his friends come to seek him and one of the friends is mary mm -hmm. of Ma mary magdalene now mary magdalene comes to seek for jesus and we are told that but mary stood outside the tomb weeping as she wept, she stopped down and looked into the tomb. And then she sees the two angels. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, 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 and one of them asks, why are you weeping? And Mary has to explain herself that we, we laid his body here. We can't find it anymore. Mm -hmm. Then what is amazing, Mary notices that there is someone who calls her. Mm -hmm from behind mm -hmm. in verse 15 John chapter 20 verse 15 and 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 we are uh, uh, she, she this person asks as asks Mary um woman why are you weeping whom are you seeking and we are told that she supposing him to be a gardener said to him sir if you have carried him away 
mm-hmm. tell us where you have laid him mm. and i will take him away then later mary realizes that oh after mary calls after jesus now calls her by name mary mm-hmm. then she realizes oh mm-hmm. this is not just any other person it is christ himself mm-hmm. it is my friend my lord it, my lord in fact she identifies she identifies him as 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 as, as raboni mm. eh, which which means teacher mm. which means teacher which means teacher I, i don't know dear dear, dear viewer I, i don't know if you can reflect back there is that friend that you you normally interact with that best friend of yours isn't it mm. perhaps you are in some confusion and you hear someone t- speaking uh maybe by uh, just behind you and and you only you cannot identify that person not until you realize that and not until that person calls you by your name and i know if we have so close friends we know how much these friends or rather we know how these people call us eh? mm. because normally these friends are so close to us and we cherish them and 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 uh, we are special to each other and so one of the people who saw jesus after the resurrection is mary magdalene mm-hmm. then jesus appears to his disciples in john chapter 20 verse 19 yeah he appears to his disciples they are closed in a room because of fear that they, they would be they would be attacked by the jews and and jesus comes and stands before them in verse 19 and he says peace be with you mm-hmm. and what is funny enough you see thomas was not among this group mm-hmm. by this time that is what the bible says uh-huh. and later these people come and tell thomas you see ma- the master has risen mm-hmm. he is he is risen and thomas says no i will not accept not until i see him and now god again after a week appears to them again mm-hmm. now in john chapter 20 verse 24 and when christ appears to them he says and 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 he, he said in verse 27 says and he said to thomas reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it into my side do do not be unbelieving but believing mm-hmm. and in verse 29 Christ concludes by saying Jesus said unto him Thomas because you have seen me mm-hmm. you have believed blessed are those who have not seen mm-hmm. yet have believed mm-hmm. dear viewer we may not have seen Christ dying and resurrecting mm-hmm. We may only have met this story perhaps in the Bible. But what I'm asking is what is it that makes you truly to believe that Christ truly died, he resurrected and he is risen and alive? What makes you truly believe that he truly conquered death? Because to Thomas he needed an evidence. Mm-hmm. But what of us? It needs a strong faith mm-hmm. a believing a live faith in Christ himself yeah. in Christ himself so we have people who are witnesses and even us today we can be witnesses of the risen savior mm-hmm. we can be witnesses of the risen Christ by faith mm-hmm. by faith i hope i truly i truly pray that you be part of, of the group that will be witnesses of the risen savior now one thing that i also want to highlight is that paul also count himself as one of the people who are witnesses of the risen savior mm-hmm. in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 perhaps we can read yeah we can read we can read from verse 1 but i also want to to read i want to read to read verse 8 It says that then last of all mm-hmm. he was seen by me also speaking of christ mm-hmm. and he says by uh, as by one born mm-hmm. out of due time sure. Christ here is alluding to the experience that, that he had with Jesus mm-hmm. perhaps Paul did not see Christ resurrecting but he still a witness of a risen savior mm-hmm. a risen Christ because in verse 9 of 1 Corinthians 15 says for i am the least of the apostles sorry verse 8 says then last of all he who was seen by me also speaking of 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 Christ Paul says as by one born out of 
due time. Out of due time. Once again, I say, we may have not seen Christ dying and resurrecting. We may have not yet touched perhaps his, his, the palm of his hands. Mm-hmm. We may have not felt the scar by his side. Mm-hmm. But still, by faith, we can be witnesses mm-hmm. of a risen Savior. Sure. Of a risen Savior. Of a, of, a, of a risen Savior. Now, um, you see, when Christ resurrected, mm-hmm. uh, Brother Hobson mentioned that he did not resurrect alone. alone. Yeah. He resurrected with many. He's, it says a multitude mm-hmm. resurrected with Six. him. Resurrected with him. Now, First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse twenty, mentions something about this group. It says, "But now Christ is risen from the dead, and has, and has become the first fruits of those who have done what, who have fallen asleep." Mm-hmm. Now, what does it mean to be the first fruit? Mm-hmm. You see, when Paul is writing this one, this is an analogy that was borrowed from the Old Testament. Now, you see, dear friends, the first fruits indicated that the harvest was not only starting, but also the first fruit revealed the quality Mm -hmm. of the products. Mm -hmm. Yes. In other words, it it, it revealed, it it was an opener to the harvest, harvesting season. (coughs) And, sorry, and it was not only signifying the season of harvest, but it also signified the quality of the produce to be expected. Now listen, if Paul calls Christ that he is the first fruits of the resurrection, then what does it mean? In fact, it gives more hope (coughs) because if Christ is the first fruit of the resurrection, in other words, it means those who will even resurrect at his second coming Mm -hmm will be just like Christ is. Mm. Those who will overcome death. Mm. In other words, just as Christ was holy, those who are righteous will resurrect with the body of Christ. With the nature of the body of who? Of Christ. That's why he's the first fruit. In other words, in Christ resurrecting, he gave hope of the... He gave hope to those who died Mm. in the faith of Jesus. Mm. And it was an assurance that they will resurrect. They will come up again to see him. Another thing is that there is hope beyond the grave. Mm. He was the first fruit. He was the first fruit. Mm. He conquered death. Even those who are righteous, even those who believe in Jesus, will conquer death. Mm. will conquer death, will conquer death. And they also will be in the similitude of Christ Mm -hmm. because Christ does not only reveal the starting of the harvest, but he also reveals the quality of the harvest. Dear viewer, if you want to read more about about, about the the, the first fruit, you can read from the book of Deuteronomy, perhaps chapter 26 from verse 1 to 11, and you'll get more to understand more about the first fruits Mm -hmm. and what it signifies. Amen. Jesus Christ being the first fruit is an assurance for us. Mm-hmm. He's saying, hey, I am the one who was dead and I am alive mm-hmm. even forevermore. Mm-hmm. I have the keys of death and the grave. Just as I resurrected, you also mm-hmm. will resurrect. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. Hobson, do you have a last word for the viewer in a minute? Well, I think the... The the, the 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 closing scenes of Christ, especially the death and resurrection, are worthy themes to contemplate on. And I think what stands out for me is um, really how glorious is the death and especially these events that you know accompany the death of Christ. How um, how powerful and um, uh, and and let's say uh, dramatic are the events that you know the, the the veil of the temple being torn from top to bottom and um, people people being resurrected. I think that is quite dramatic for us to contemplate upon and behold the power of Christ and believe in Him that He is the Messiah. 
because I believe all these miracles happened that we who shall read in the ends of the world shall have uh, trust in him that indeed he is the Messiah. He's the one who can save us from uh, the power of sin and from our guilt and uh, from the present sin. I believe this stands clear for us to believe that he is the Messiah who came down that whoever believes in him mm -hmm. shall not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. What about you, Mr. Alvin? Uh, I don't know why I feel so excited in, 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 in studying mm -hmm. the issue of uh, the death and the resurrection of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because to me, it is an assurance that in him, truly, mm -hmm. there is victory. Amen. In him, truly, there is victory. In him, there is hope. Mm -hmm. And it is by clinging to that hope that we become witnesses mm -hmm. of the resurrected Savior. Mm -hmm. I, I really wish that you also join the rest, or rather than join the community of faith in becoming a witness of the resurrected Savior. As we also await the resurrection of our beloved who have slept in the faith of Jesus. Mm. Yeah, sure. In closing, I will read the words from the Desire of Ages, page 777, page 787, mm -hmm. which says, The voice that cried from the cross, It is finished, was heard among the dead. It pierced the walls of sepulchres and summoned the sleepers to arise. Thus will it be when the voice of Christ shall be heard from the dead, from heaven, that voice will penetrate the graves and unbar the tombs, and the dead in Christ shall arise. At the Savior's resurrection, a few graves were opened, but at his second coming, all the precious dead shall hear his voice and shall come forth to glorious immortal life. The same power that raised Christ from the dead will raise his church and mm -hmm. glorify it with him above all principalities, above all powers, above every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. This is so mm -hmm. powerful that what really can separate us from the love of God, not even death can mm -hmm. separate us from the love of God. The lesson of this quote has echoed and re-echoed and re-echoed that he who has the Son mm -hmm. has life. life. May God bless you. Continue reading more in your very own lesson on death, dying, and the future hope. You can visit your nearest Adventist book center and get yourself a copy or visit absg.adventist.org. Uh, Mr. Mukaya, you can close for us with a word of prayer. Thank you. Let's, let's pray. Our loving oh. Father, what in heaven, we thank you for the blessing of this word that in Christ we might have hope that he is our savior and he is our redeemer. Or may these words find a dwelling place in our hearts. This we pray, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wonderful. Amen. See you next time. <laughs>